Last time I showed you my water boiler. I called it a rocket stove boiler, but I've since learned that it really isn't a rocket stove at all. I'll explore that in another video sometime, but for now, let's just call it a horizontal flue wood stove with water boiler. Anyway, whatever you call it, it worked, so I carried on. Here's a drawing of the plan. There's the boiler set in the flue. It just has to get the water to boil. Let's call that the primary stage. The secondary stage is to heat that steam. I hope that will happen in the copper tube that's coiled up inside the chimney. So if I connect up the boiler to the chimney tubes, the steam should go up to the top and then down inside the coils, getting hot all the time. But the hottest part of the whole setup is the grate. So I want to finish heating the steam inside the grate. So let's call that the tertiary stage. Surely it makes sense to add the most heat at the end of the process, doesn't it? So I made a new grate out of steel tube. I can't use copper pipe anymore, apparently, because the heat in the firebox would be too much for it. I'm learning such a lot from your comments, thank you. At this rate, one day I'll know everything. The problem was getting the welder into the internal corners. Perhaps a TIG welder would be better? I don't know. I made the rate in two parts and then joined them together. It looked okay when I'd finished it, but when I tested it, I realized it was full of tiny pinholes. So I had to go over and add more weld everywhere. I should have used more power in the beginning, but it's not thick walled pipe, so I could easily have blown holes in it. Yes, I know it's shocking, but no one will ever see it except you lot. It might not look very big, but there's actually four feet of tube in there. So the route is through the boiler, up the chimney, down the chimney, and through the grate. This is the flash part of the title. I'm hoping that steam coming into this red hot tube will be flashed up to a working temperature. Sounds kind of fun, doesn't it? <laughs> I had to cut a slot for the pipes in the side of the stove. It was a good excuse to try my new present from Pat. And it's brilliant. Thanks, Pat. So that's the third stage installed. I just have to make all the connections so the steam has nowhere else to go. And then to assemble it outside. This is the full amount of water that the boiler holds once it's properly installed. The floats inside take up most of the space. I'm using empty camping gas bottles for those. They operate the float valve, which stops the system getting flooded with water. And funnily enough, they work better than old paint tins. And yes, that's a pressure relief valve, just in case. I used a gas burner to speed things up, but it still didn't want to warm up the chimney and reverse the airflow. Hmm, it worked fine last time. I think it might have been partly down to the weather. I'm sure it would have got there in the end, but I decided that just wasn't good enough. So I started all over again with an improved design. Oh man. <laughs> it seemed to me that if I took my three stages and just rearranged them, 
in different positions, I could make starting the stove easier. And so this is my new improved arrangement. It still has the three stages, the boiler, the tubes in the chimney, and the flash boiler grate. But this time the chimney is over the firebox. So it should get lots of the radiated heat and that will help draw up the air. And once it's hot, the heat should flow around the boiler first before it goes up the chimney. But with this arrangement for starting, I can also let the fire burn directly upwards if I open a small door in the roof of the firebox. Once everything's warmed up, I can close the door again, diverting the heat around the boiler. Should work, shouldn't it? Maybe. So I took apart the old stove. Very sad. Whoever made this did a great job. Took a bit of grinding before it came apart. And then I cut up some more pieces on my CNC plasma cutter. Did I ever mention it's a marvelous machine? I was able to reuse some of the steel pieces from the old stove, so it wasn't all a disaster. And this is what it looks like now. The air should come in here through a grill in the front, through the fire and the grate, around the boiler, and then up the chimney. But to start it, there's this door in the top of the firebox. And there's now a main door on the firebox too, so the airflow is not so much downwards as horizontal. What do you think? Will it work? Time to try again. Starting trapdoor open. Fuel in. closed. While that's doing its thing, I reconnected the water and turned it on. And then I closed the trap door, forcing air around the boiler. chimney still drew the smoke up so my plan seems to be working very exciting I wanted to check each stage in turn so I waited for the water to boil then I gingerly connected that outlet to the chimney tubes And that worked instantly. The temperature increased from about 100 degrees centigrade to about 150. So now to connect stage three, the grate, without scalding myself if I can help it. And yes, finally, we have dry steam, hooray. And how do I know it's dry steam? Because it can do this. I think it's supposed to light the matches completely. So if you know what's not quite right here, perhaps you could tell me in the comments, please. Yes, it needs insulating. And I'm not sure that there's enough steam to do much with just yet. But I now have a solid fuel steam generator that makes 
a pretty reliable supply of dry steam with only one moving part, that's the float valve, and without much of a fire even. Hmm, not too bad. I wonder what we could do with that steam. <laughs> 